was education, the interest in the profession, high income, the status that being a professional accountant provides. And I believe also those of us who are professional accountants still we can relate to the same, you know, the same factors as some of what attracted us to the profession. So while these things are there, create an opportunity to encourage anyone to pursue a, 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 a profession in accounting. We've also identified the threats that will minimize the impact that these potential opportunities present. So today in Nigeria, most of the universities producing bachelor degree accountants are using the US gap. And yet, to modify or revise the curricula to incorporate the IRS as part of the program. So, accountants that are prepared come not ready prepared for the job market. Technology is at the heart of all modern businesses, and we have very high technological penetration. However, many students become college graduates and are not computer literate. This is a mismatch between what the market demands and what is being supplied to that market. And of course, being not being computer literate is a recipe for not getting employed. In a same survey conducted by Amina Obed, she also looked at factors that would discourage women from going into the profession. She listed stereotype attitude of female assertiveness as being one. People think you want to learn too much book, you want to be equal with a man, gender bias. Discrimination in hiring and promotion, a glass ceiling, of course, personal life because women normally take care of the family and opportunities for travel makes it challenging. Motherhood, time flexibility, long working hours, and sometimes the work environment just makes it challenging to be there. She also mentioned the lack of mentor and role models are some of the barriers to encouraging women to go into the profession. We also believe that those elements are very relevant to our situation in Liberia. A survey of the 17 or 70 of the public sector institutions in Liberia today revealed that of the current positions of controllers and deputy controllers, there are only 16 females serving as controllers and five serving as deputy, which gave to 23% and 7% representation. I mean, even without the requirement, the participation is still very good. So these are our analysis of the sector in membership while increasing the membership. One of the that is also possible is that one of the goals of staff in the institute secretariat with the appropriate technical directors and having a clear roadmap to accomplishing this is clearly incorporated in activities. Also, we believe it is important that LRCP is set a strategic goal of increasing female membership and setting a target of not less than 50%. Craft a clear strategy to accomplish that. Now, for us, the female accountants, 
I do see a great opportunity here for us as well. And we can also actively support the Institute in accomplishing this strategic goal should it be set. For example, the Institute consistent with other peer goals in the Sub-Saharan African region has encouraged us to form a subgroup and we attempted to do that and even form a name for ourselves for the Association of Certified Women Accountants of Liberia. Where is that today? Also, how many of us are in a classroom impacting knowledge for the next generation of female accountants? Have we ever organized or participated in career day programs or even just targeted a female candidates or accounting students? I believe we need to serve as mentors and role models. The younger women need to see and engage with us to believe that there are women who bring it successfully into the profession and also at the top of what they do. We can initiate continued media engagement focusing on attracting women and girls into the profession amongst other activities. So this I'm presenting as a challenge to all of us professional women accountants in this room. We need to learn from our setbacks and successes. We need to be mentors. We need to pay it forward and continue to learn. So our male counterparts, we can leave you all behind. We all need to support our institution to be where we want it to be. Members today are potential leaders. So it is imperative that we devote some time to give back to the Institute. As it is only we, as the members, that will together ensure the growth of the LIC. I believe we have some students in this room or who might be following by whatever social media or platform we're using. Potential professional accountants, especially our current student membership, is active communicating. These skills are necessary to have because the trend in accounting today, which focuses on accounting automation, transparency, and security and data analysis has been defined on how the accounting skills are utilized and required to be provided. Mm -hmm. So whether we are in the public or private sector, as a female accountant, I am optimistic that the strengths and opportunities presented here today far always the weaknesses and threats. We, however, must ensure the long-range plans of the Institute continue to remain relevant and measurable. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sarah. So, this is how we want to go. I just want to give a brief synopsis for discussion. And from there, we're going to move over to our discussant, who I will introduce before. She comes up with a small discussion. And then, whatever the two of them did not mention, I will endeavor to mention that. We can go into question and answer. So, first, um, Mr. Sadie talked about basically the opportunities and challenges that are being faced by the organization. And she mentioned that accounting is needed in all facets of our society. And even though there are roles, there are certain roles that have always been there for the traditional accountant, but since we are also rapidly moving towards existing and new technology, 
we also have to be able to move along with the times to be on par with um, changing realities, which are uh, sometimes forecasting. Um, she also talked about accounting compliance, and we must be able to transition to what she called the body practice. She also mentioned um, accountants being creators, providers, and reporters of value. And when it comes to being a creator, she talked about having a strategic leadership role in creating a long-term value. As a provider, she talks about informing and guiding business owners to be able to have steady businesses for value addition. And as reporters of value, she talked about being able to present financial information so that users are able to make informed decisions. She also talked about providing service to enhance adequate, adequate reporting and compliance for economic growth. And having increased opportunities along with those challenges. Now, she decided to present her analysis in the form of a SWOT analysis, and uh, we began with the strengths. For the strengths, she said, um, with the LICPA has been setting standards in line with um, international bodies, and we've been able to develop, implement, and monitor compliance across the country. And she mentioned the professional accountancy exams were in so far, we have like 30 people qualified. And for the accounting technician scheme, 13 people. I'm happy to say some of us were the guinea pigs. So that's the word. Thank you. And, and for that, and let me also say um, there was somebody who actually encouraged us. Mr. Momoto was um, instrumental in getting us to start our program and stay in the program. And then she also mentioned a long-term strategic vision that the ICP has um, from last year, 2021 to 2024, that's over a five-year period. And so far, we have like 300 students who have been into the, uh, into the ASPA program and over a thousand into the CA program. When it comes to weaknesses, she says, um, our growing concern as an institution is moderate to high risk. And out of the 108 active, active 108 members, we have about 50% of active members, which is um, not too good for our country. And we also talk about growth, where most of us are already over 40 years old. We have those of those of the younger people who are coming in, and for some reason, I don't know whether it's because they're not too encouraged, but um, the interest is, is really not not available for us women. So far, the, we can boast of only nine women out of a group of 108. I think we even found what's in the legislature. <laughs> and she also mentioned the, the inherent risk. That an institute is faced with where most times we rely on donor support, we have to move towards being more self sufficient. And even though the, the institute's um, strategic plan did, did identify strategic goals, but when it comes to capacity building for women, that is not um, mentioned. And then the and then she also talked about not only for female accountants, but accountants who are, I mean, students who are aspiring, women I mean, who are aspiring to become female accountants, there's no provision for some sort of um, some sort of capacity building for them. When it comes to opportunities, she said there are immense opportunities for members, females, and students. And my, man, so many companies uh, are required to to apply the international financial reporting standards in, in their reportage. And these opportunities are available, and many of these opportunities are available for the profession. 
However, the minimum requirements in, uh, for financial staff in public institutions are that you, excuse me, are that you must have as many uh, certified public accountants in, sorry, in the roles of in a role for um, in financial role, but however, we have very few. So, now she talked about an analysis. She talked about an analysis of her uh, hours that she can have get uh, for certified uh, public accounting accountant from Saudi Arabia. Who mentioned that some of the opportunities we have in a professional women education, having interest in profession, and then the high salaries and benefits and of course the status of becoming a certified public accountant. On a council press, she mentioned that most schools teach the US gap, while many companies prefer or have to use the had to apply the IRS in the report dash. So what happens as a result is that accountants come out of the university, but they don't really be readily prepared for the job market. And then when it comes to technology also, they are college graduates, but they're not computer literate. So you see, you have a conflict between what the profession demands and what it can supply. She also mentioned factors from the Anna Udek, um, analysis that is encouraging from going into the profession. Stereotyping, which is not unique only to not unique only to uh, you know, the accounting profession, it is kind of like it's carried over to several other professions. And then gender biases. Most times people prefer men for whatever reason people prefer they are more comfortable than men are quote unquote able, I mean, able to do their job as compared to women. And discrimination in family life, most times women are family to that they have to do and that they have to do with people too. Um, there are certain things that are expected of them as a woman, as a woman, sorry. Time flexibility, the job I mean, it's accounting, they got the men profession. People sometimes they have to work overtime, but then we have families, we have to take care of them. I 
And then she also mentioned us as women being able to enter the camp. How many of us have to teach? Because if there are women, there are women, the young women go to when I come to school, we have the privilege of becoming the first part of the company, the child of the company. And she goes to the classroom and she sees only men. Probably she may think maybe this is something that I'm not going to do. Let me just let it be. Or maybe let me just shift to management and never make sense. Since I don't see it, Encouraging us to go back, go to the schools and give back. She also mentioned that, yes, yeah, she agreed that the discussion is rewarding, equal to men, something that we have to say to women and girls or go to talk to them. And she mentioned what she called soft skills that you must have if you want to be a professional accountant. Attention to details, you must be effective for me. Being able to say something that people can understand, it's not that where people will start you know, getting confused and wondering what is my thing, this is what I'm saying, and I'm going to go. kind of feel the information. When it comes to hard skills, she mentioned you know, having good business acumen, good experience, being able to analyze that, and finally being able to have great things. Mathematics skills. But for the entire, uh, entire analysis, she believes that even though we've had, we have now weaknesses, we have challenges, but there are also strengths and opportunities that we have which far outweigh the weaknesses and challenges. The things that we harness our skills, we will be able to be our goal of having more members, especially having women. And having an increase in women membership. Thank you very much. So, without much ado, I will introduce our discussant, Dr. Patience Ado Jewu. Dr. Jewu is a member of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Ghana. She's also a member of our institution, the Ministry of Public Accountants, the LICP. She has a first degree in accounting and information systems from the Regent University of Science and Technology in Accra, as well as an MDA from Masters of Business Administration from the Central University College in Ghana, and a PhD, who knows, girl, a PhD in finance with over 15 years of experience in finance and accounting, auditing, tax, advisory, and consulting. She has excellent rating and plural communication skills. She is the director at IKEA Liberia with vast experience in audit and tax, tax as well as with writing of winning proposals. She is a candidate at the Chantok Institute of Taxation, a motivational speaker, and a counselor with proving analytical problem, problem solving skills. The skills are regularly brought to bear in solving accounting and related operational issues. She's proficient in IRS, ISA, and other accounting software. She's happily married for two children. So I will call the call to the podium our discussion with Ms. Jibu. And after our discussion, we'll come in with one or two points which we think were left out, and then we'll open the floor for discussions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Lady. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I just want to add to what Madam Deputy has already presented. Uh, we are looking at the opportunities and challenges for the accountancy profession, perspective of the female qualified accountant, as it relates to employment, professional development, and careers. I want to say that institutions and organizations such as the United Nations to the OECD and the World Bank are paying more attention to women. Some European countries have already introduced quotas to get more women on company boards. Every self-respected company is launching initiatives 
conducting studies and running conferences on how to make the most of female potential. <coughs> However, as mentioned already, the career path of women in professional service has never been straightforward. And getting to position of leadership, as history has highlighted, has always been rather a struggle for the female sex. Women at the partnership level will still find that they are sometimes the only female making up just six percent in the boardroom where decisions are being taken. The challenge faced by the accountancy profession today is to acknowledge the issues affecting women in the workplace so that all remaining barriers to their upward mobility can be removed. I want to add that the American Institute of Certified Public Accountant Special Commission on Upward Mobility of Women identified several issues that impair the promotion and retention of women in public practice. The reasons are childcare, family responsibilities, awareness of success, perception problems, culture, and attitude towards women, stress, dating and marriage, and involvement in the profession association. The conflict of women life and the accounting career to be negatively impacted in the retention of women in public practice. In general, the general perception about women is that they are very devoted to work because of example of maternity leave, where a woman gets pregnant and is expected to take some leave off. So that's also an issue that affects women in the profession. Women have domestic responsibilities in building their careers to the top. The need to look into gender issues in accounting profession cannot be overemphasized. As mentioned already, women are not adequately represented in leadership positions in the profession. As only three women who have been the president are still being corrected. From 1963 to date, three women. That is it. So that that should tell you that women we are we are really really suffering. Now. As our presenter already said, yeah, we will not just yes. fall. Well, all right. We will not just fall. It's, it's a woman president. Yes, Madam Senator, the current president. So we are not going to just focus on our weaknesses or the challenges, as the presenter said. We also believe that when we can enhance women, we can encourage the female uh, uh, women to be able to climb to the top. So we, have, we believe that equal opportunities, discrimination, and de gender stereotyping. Can be taken away. A survey was conducted among women in Ghana, specifically in the Ashanti regions. And one of the respondents uh, said from the time she, she was brought up, her perception of accountancy was that it's for men. Hmm. And that women are meant to be, done, to be at the kitchen to cook and to help their husbands. How do we help people like this? One, we can do that through mentorship. Women in accounting should have their mentors in high profession to be able to coach them, to guide them, to be able to reach to the top. And as women as well, we also need to develop positive work habits. Women in accounting can progress within their career if they cultivate positive working habits and behavior, such as effective time management, hard work and dedication, self-confidence, and self-discipline. Women in the accounting profession should be disciplined and stay focused on their duty as accountants to enhance their success in the career path. As part of cultivating positive uh, habits, female accountants will regularly serve towards their career engagement. They must be focused on what they are called to do. Another way of enhancing this profession when it comes to the women on the female side 
is for us to engage in our continual training, which is the continual professional development. The world is dynamic as we should be, and therefore new things are coming out each, every, each and every day. Third, one has to constantly be looking in on himself in order to keep with the changing times. As a matter of fact, women in accounting need to occasionally take up short courses and programs to stay current in the profession. Work-life balance. Trying to balance the demand of one job and responsibility of the family can at times be very challenging, as mentioned already. What can one do? You can't be it all. Managing home as a professional woman, you still need support. In my case, for example, I have nurses, I have a nurse who helped me to run the house. So I don't remember one day that I miss work. I'm always at work. I'm the first to come, I'm the last to go, most times. I'm able to achieve this because I have helpers. You can't do it alone. If you want to try it, we'll break down. So for us to climb to the top, we need people to help us. Now, putting all this together, I'm, I'm trying, I want to talk about some few recommendations that will help women to be able to remain at the top as professional accountants. Families, spouses, or female accountants to regularly support their partner, especially when it comes to upgrading of the children, care of their home, as an etc. Two, principal partners in accounting to see women intellectual capable of advancing to the top. Opportunities, equal opportunities need to be given to women. Discrimination must be taken out when it comes to women occupying high positions in organizations. As we have already gone through this, I want to also add by saying that we have a lot of challenges, as mentioned already, as well as we have opportunities. I want to just run through the challenges, as mentioned already. We all know that accountant or accountancy is now automated. So there's a need for us to be abreast of the changes. If we sit down, we see that we are not doing manual auditing. We have some offices are using case where whatever it is, we must also rise to that challenge and then be abreast of that. There are new task laws, a lot of uh, the changes in the standards, we must all be abreast of that. Lastly, I want to show that just like all these challenges that we face as women, we still have opportunities. One is that you can work as a woman. I um, don't know I said, I mentioned it, that some companies prefer working with men. But I can assure you that most organizations rather prefer working with women. Because when it comes to putting women at, let's say, the financial aspect of it, you can trust a woman. Compared to a man. <laughs> 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 so when those people tell you, most employees prefer to, to give opportunity to women when it comes to finance management. So women, we still have opportunity and we should have confidence in ourselves and rise up to the game. Now, this is a few things I want to add. Thank you very much. Thank things we believe in, where if a woman is married and she wants to be an accountant, and she has a family, mm -hmm. and she's having pressure from her husband, it comes to the point where she has to choose. Yeah. And most times, she chooses her family. Mm -hmm. So we want to say thank you to the strong men who will be able to support the women through our okay. <laughs> So what happens also is that um, these, um, these patriarchal norms bring about low self-esteem because we may think we can do it. I mean, um, 
the hallacy of so they're like, okay, maybe this thing is not for me. Let me just try and do what I can do when I will be more comfortable, so to speak. And then there are there's another thing we realize is that uh, people are afraid of feeling, especially the women. But welcome to the club. Feeling comes to the territory. You get it. You just have to be focused and tell yourself, this is what I want. And then we should let people try. Let people try. Let men try to see us as partners, not necessarily as women who should be there to to support you. <laughs> okay, thank you. Man. So, and uh, finally, through our endeavor, we also have to say thank you to, he's not here, I don't know what that is, online, but Dr. Chris Sopo mm. and Dr. Williams are too. Mm. They were two people who were in the forest. <laughs> really, really, really they gave their time, they gave their resources, and that's why we're here today. It's not that anybody bringing us. All of you who have contributed to us being what we are today, we appreciate you. Okay. So, without much ado, we will go into the discussion. So, if people have questions and answers, we are here to respond or comment. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Kian Musa, president of ITEP. Um, I believe uh, all that needs to be said has been said by Sisaki and the patients. And patients. And uh, I think it has adequately represented all that they have said. Thank you very much. But let me take you back. Uh, I thought when I started to speak, I might not know sure where I've been here. It was really um, interesting and gratifying to hear him speak. <coughs> and now today, I tell you today, I might not show whether I will come. And I'm hearing it for the first time that the one who, in addition to rejuvenating the career, I'm setting it up when you come from the UK. He also initiated that work. Uh, and this is a tsunami achievement. Today, here, that I had it our own, His Excellency, the other party for was the first of our president. Uh, and I was the last of our president up to, up to <laughs> July, up to the end of July 2022. And so far, the shortest serving our president. Our number of president was just two months. <laughs> Why? Because it seems to be two years. And then in August 2020, I can took the mantle of leadership of Abwa. Then uh, she served the 56 president, served 10 months to the end of her I can tenure end of May 2021, and the immediate past presidents, the 27th president, served our full presidential year, and ended over to me on the 1st of May 2022, and now by July 31st, 2022, Nigeria stand on the presidency of our work in Kenya. Uh, I have the consolation that at least my CV will read our <laughs> part. <laughs> um, so we plan 
a manual show. But I never mentioned a manual show is 10 years older than me, but he did look it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> as he was starting and speaking, he was 76, he said, 76 years old. So by the time he returned from the UK, I was just graduating from the university at 22. <laughs> and he was 22 then. He understand? So thank you very much. Please ask uh, compare our gratitude in Nigeria for this very uh, viable contribution to the development of our countries. All in Nigeria, but in West Africa, so please. So thank you very much. Try and go back or try and go back. for us much older than you. But I believe you will remember it, I will say it, and I will convey our felicitations from Liberia to Banifo. In my northern Banifo was Nigeria's ambassador to the United Nations at the time. Thank you. On the people presented, I don't know how many members are there of Big How many? Yeah, currently, 180. 180. 180. 180. 180. 180. 180. 180. 180. 180. 180. 180. 180. 180. 180. 180. 180. 180. 180. 180. 180. Uh, I cannot speak for Anna, but I can as 100, as of about 56,000 members from 1965 to it. And then uh, only about 30% are women. <laughs> so, two, two, about two weeks ago, I was invited by them. Uh, on the long long run, and I got this information. So you see, so it's not only you, you have a long way to go. <laughs> and, uh, out of the from 1965 to date, I can have 58 presidents at the 58th. Out of the eight, only eight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And even that eight, the first one came on in 1991. So from 1965 to 1990s, there was no female president. So you'll understand. Um, Patience. I have spoken about Turkey. Uh, the woman needs support on the front. And uh, he needs encouragement in the office. These are apps. Why is this why is the support of the front front I believe that every woman will be a supportive husband. But beyond that, you also need a supportive family. The two are different. If you have an understanding husband and the family are not, you are in trouble. And it's not about being a woman and keep earning the sufficient money to take your children to the best schools and the aunt, the best qualifications. No. There is no person, nobody, that could take care of and bring up children more than the mother. So the challenge here is to balance for the career and the house and the upbringing. No matter how much you make, you need time to be with your children. Because if you don't, and you leave them with the nanny and the house pays, by the time you are through with your career, you come, you find that they are not there, they are with their own family. They don't have time for you. So 
So you need to balance, it's not easy, but you need to balance it. And I agree with you that a woman will require encouragement in the office. But this encouragement should not be solicited on the basis of pity. It should be armed. Hard work, integrity, adherence, a ethical values like prove yourself. And if you are lucky, you have a boss that does not have inferiority complex, you will move on. But prove yourself. Uh, in my entire years when I was in the UK, just shortly after Mr. Emmanuel had given birth, I went to UK 24. Famous American soft opera, the corridors. In one of the episodes, they say it was an interaction between the father and the son. And the, the son, in the time, said, Prove yourself and pray hard. Finally, I would like to advise you that in Nigeria, we have. Society for women accountants and their sort, I think you are aware of it. So, even though the number is relatively small, you are living in the context of the country you are, which is small also, is small as well as population, that is an strong starting company. I feel inspired by what uh, Mr. Michael was just saying. When you did, you found the way it was. You didn't lament or pack and return to UK and get a better job. No. You feel the challenge. This is Liberia, this is my country. How do I make the profession the profession of the dream that I have? And they say the rest is history. If you look at this uh, intimidated CV, you know, understand that you didn't make a mistake by doing that. And that is it. So if you we are only nine out of 100, maybe roughly 10%. You could start something so that generations to come will say, Oh, our founding fathers, sorry for you to be. Not sorry for you to be. Okay, our founding fathers. Yes, so we should proceed it on our three things. One, we are thinking of the professional development. How do you get more? <laughs> women, females, we call me chartered accountants. But there is here another general, general both men and the women. How do you make the youth be interested in taking accountancy as a career? Because this is a general global problem. And I raised you added my presidency when the UK president of CIMA came. That is the management of the UK came. So this is a global problem. They are interested in becoming Ronaldo or Ronaldo. I don't want to mention a president. So, and they are interested in going into the singers. They are interested in being footballers. They are interested in being dancers. They are interested in understand the profession is about passion. Yes, a tough break would go out to get 200,000 pounds per week, 300,000 euros per week. So you want that some people in your whole country will get that. So, how do you get the youth, what the other like, like the world will be interested in taking? Accountancy is a career. When you will be rich, you will be rich. If you want to be spiritual. Again, but our profession is not about making money, it's about the fantastic money. And in the process of what you are living. And if you understand to be rich, you be rich. So not only the female, not only the male. This is important. And why I'm telling you that in Ida when I want to broadcast the young. It's a program where we go to secondary schools, we 
you go to the universities, you, you try to address the students and tell them the, uh, to aspire to be better at the moment. I don't talk to like that. So that to, in the first place, you need to even sensitize them to know that there is professional core campus. This is my point. So this is uh, part of what you do. And secondly, in the issue of advocacy. Looking at what to our country, socially, economically, politically, especially in financial accounting and the economy, how do you draw the attention of your governments? Because the authority is the government, the land of the government. They control the resources, human and material. How do you do that at least? Like in, in Aika, in Nigeria, I just this night uh, approved it. There's what you call budget symposium, organized by Aika. And that is anytime the Mr. President lays down, presented his annual national annual budget to the National Assembly. I can that we have a committee called TRPC, Technical Research and Policy, Public Policy Committee. We analyze it from professional viewpoints, Congress, Brazil, and at the end of it, we have a communicate, and this communicate is submitted to all critical stakeholders. This is a form of advocacy that uh, you do. And finally, on that, in the issue of humanitarian, humanitarian intervention, or you call it philanthropy, that's what all oh, this is swamp, or if you call it uh, today, it's swamp. Society of Women Accountants in Liberia. If you do that, yeah, they identify female who are interested, who have the capacity or the capability to be chartered accountants and probably from immediate homes and assist them to become chartered accountants by giving scholarships, etc. We, we saw and all that. So, on that, I think you would. Could attempt to, you seem to be, uh, Peja seems to be a uh, competent from Nigeria because he's competent with Granito. You can get in touch with the uh, SWAM. This guy, they'll give you the agency. They say, take this book they wrote about, uh, about, about, about the uh, activities from the beginning, etc. If you read that book, you want to do it. You can take it and adapt it in Nigeria and start somewhere. So, with that, I would like to thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to talk to you. And I think I've taken too much of your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, is there any question, any comment? We have like. Okay, we have 10 minutes. Is there any question? Hello, yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right. um, first of all, thank you for the presentation. And I'm Vlad Wright from Cultural University County Department. Here from the data analysis, uh, the presenter gave because the, the fee be in ARCPA. I want to go over some of the measures of the CPA, the ARCPA are put in place to get more fee be in the rest of the job, especially those that are graduating from the university. <coughs> From our presentation, we uh, mentioned that uh, that needs to be one of the strategic goals that the institute needs to set in its current strategic action plan. All right. So the goal is to increase membership. But we said let us subdivide that goal and have a specific target for women. 
and come up with the implementation actions that will enable them to achieve that. So based on our uh, analysis, we didn't see that as a distinct element in the current action plan, but if the president is here, he can chime in, but we thought that that is an area that needs to be strengthened. Yeah. Thank you, um, Student Watts. Your name, please. Madam Wright. Right. Thank you very much. Uh, I listened to the presenter, and it was very interesting that she brought up these points. And I want to make one thing clear right here that um, even before I came to the presidency of the LICBA, though I do agree with her, it is not within the strategic plan as a strategic goal. But the Institute has taken measures beginning from Mr. Steven Sonobola, when we went to Nigeria, um, at the time, um, Zakaria, Zakaria was the president of Hakan, when we were invited, and we engaged the female group in Oswan, and then um, we came to Liberia, we called our females, and we organized the first female group in Liberia, where, at the LICBA, where well, and then, when I assumed the responsibility of the LICBA, I reactivated that and led a delegation of LICBA council members together with our acting president to meet the then president so went for training and in Italy, and then the position was in Ghana. So the question of who represents us became an issue. <laughs> yes, it became an issue. So then I told the then executive director Moses Kessali right back to the woman that. Because of some constraint, we don't have continue to go right now, but in the near future, we will get back. So that initiative has been there. And to close it up, just um, in July, we were in Zimbabwe at the Victoria Falls, where we had the Papa AGM. And I had a discussion with Mr. Ali Johnson and the CEO of Papa, Madam Aga Prisco, where I discussed that we have this problem going at Europe for the ASFA program, and we have females that are really challenged financially to go into the program. So Ali Johnson asked me, what would be the cost per student? And I said, because of the economic constraint, we put at 75 dollars per student. So he called Alita immediately and said, look, I want you to identify a donor to support this program. So better when you get back to my blood, do a communicate to Alita. The list of the student, their contacts, send it to us. He has done that, he's gone to Alita, she responded to us that our donor has been identified, but we need information pertaining to the benefits we accrue from our training agreement with the ASMIG. So we did that, and we are sharing with OCA Coffee who is in charge of that. So the issue of financing women or supporting them in the industry has been a goal for us. But the question is if the funds eventually arrive, will these females make good on this kind? We've seen that in the beginning, I mean, in the past, where Mr. Silver Bullock became president and gave 850 of their scholarship. Don't pay anything come to school. When they start with the first exam and saw the failure rate, they dropped from about 100. We encouraged and encouraged and encouraged and encouraged. So, though it is not strategic, but it is part of what we want to achieve. For me, I believe in supporting women. And I recognize that they are very valuable when it comes to sustaining an economy and the country. Let me tell you something about women. They are smarter than us. They are. If you want to put it to a test, test the woman. And she will tell you that I can even look behind your hair when I'm looking, I'm sending it to you. And this is how you do it. This is how you do it. Let me tell you something. This is how you do it. Men, we have this ego. I'm a man. <laughs> and the boss. What was the boss? She sits, she watches you, and she's thinking. And the person that does a lot of thinking is better than you who don't think. Because we feel we have to ask, I can do, I can do, I can do. But she's thinking. And we make these mistakes, but the old woman them, maybe in the middle of the night, when she has brought your eyes and men, listen to me, let me tell you something. And you look into it and take six out of it. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm going to do that. So we have given the support, and we will continue to do that, even though it's not particular. But we, 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 we believe in them. Uh, I have a daughter out there. She's the only one I have. And because uh, I want to see the best, and so I give her the best. 
and you see the gorgeous woman, that's why she shines every day. So, we will always, we will always support you, and we stand to support you, though it's not strategic, but when that, when the fully is approved, we will vote. So that you come to the And I'm not amazing that it will be approved, because even before I went to Nigeria, I thought to have it for the to us, and I probably said, Rachel, we are not approved. Aita is working, and he did, he has, and he has to that. She has bridges and donors have been identified, and I mean, it's 90 percent that will have that money. But I want to get involved to talk to the 650 girls. We've talked to them, we telephoned them, we said, oh, this thing is an opportunity that you need to take. So thank you, it's not strategic. We brought it up, but we are working on it, and that's something we have. It's not what we put in the video report, it's in the presidential report. Thank you. Thank you. I, would, I, I wish to thank uh, the president. Just uh, an uh, example from us, which you might uh, adapt. We have our three stages in Nigeria. Now, I spoke to you about the Kaitem Young, which has to do with secondary school students. Then, we used to have what you call residency. And what happens is, uh, we get the tertiary institutions, the students from various tertiary institutions gather for this kind of program. Thirdly, we have the National Aid Service, and you visit the camps and try and reach out not only to the accounting students, but those in allied areas like the economies and those who study business as well. But, but this, the second one, why I'm telling you this. There is a difference in our own, which I don't know whether it's in Jim or yes. You, you only register in Nigeria as a professional student if you have a HND or degree in anything. But like the ATS, we started with four levels. That's it. So look at this and study it. That's why I said earlier, on, please get in touch with us. One, um, Victoria, you can get me to Ida. You can either write us, we direct you to Swan. You rub mine and see how you could adapt it. I know there is a great differential in our population, in our number of tertiary institutions, the number of universities. There are over 200 uh, tertiary institutions, there are over 100 universities, etc. Our population is over 200 million. You are sure of saying, but this is what I am saying. And finally, on a lighter note, I want to agree with Victor about the women. <laughs> You know, when I got my, my prayer was, God, the first time you give me, let me be a girl. You know why? I believe they are more compassionate. That is the word number two. As the man and the woman grew, as the boys and the girls grew, you find that the, the girl will be in a position to take hold of the leadership of the house rather than the man who is not around. <laughs> really around. And if she wants to discipline her brothers and sisters, her siblings, nobody will be able to get this girl. Because if the first is a boy and the, the immediate one following is a girl, you will start saying, Look at this girl. Well, but if he's elder, you know that he will not come. But you know what happened? My first child was a boy. <laughs> Second is a girl. The third is a boy. The fourth is a girl. Then one, two, three, four, all boys. <laughs> so after having boy, girl, boy, girl, I had four boys in the room. So you see, well, the girls are outnumbered. Six boys, six girls. So I say, if I give you like you have, if you do it the other way, two boys, six girls, I would have preferred it. But go to size. So this is, I really appreciate my wife plays a real role of home manager. Sometimes I keep on wondering whether she the accountant or me. <laughs> I understand, so I agree with people, I agree. That's why I say we are always happy because. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Oh, we, we, we don't have time in our, in our film, but let me, let me just, you see, two more questions, but I can see myself. Yeah. 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 So, let me, 
27 students, all of the 27 students, 24 are girls. Wow. Wow. Yes. Yes. They, 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 doing, and they are doing accounting at a high level. And so I'm looking for a president. Normally in my class, when I go to teach, I always like to take a female as the president. And I tell her, look, if you're my president and you pass this course, and you make an A, I will employ you. And so I have employed six of them. Oh. Oh. I got six. And luckily for me, I took one. And that one, she have excelled in the professional exam. I think most of you know what Fatou is. Fatou got two more people to qualify. And when I entered the class this semester, and I was looking for the president, and then one of the girls just said, Take the one. I said, why? Well, he said, she passed the first level of last one exam. All four papers. Wow. I said, give me your CV tomorrow. I will employ you. Wow. So in October 1, I will be in November 1, I will bring her on board. I'm saying this to say, look, the women, I mean, you can get a lot of them from them. If you encourage them. I don't know one of your 16 controllers you got. You took my controller into consideration. You got my the, the financial controller from up and go. Oh, so I, I'll tell you this. I'm, since I took the woman as controller, so everything's great. In fact, in fact, some of the things, some of the things that she she can suggest, I'll be like, huh? But there are challenges, and what we need to do is to work with them. We shouldn't despise them because of the challenges or the hurdles. For me, I always encourage them, and so uh, I'm psyche. For this program, I will, I will, I will, I will I mean, open the class for you so you can encourage them so that you see how we can follow them into that program. Yeah. Because I always encourage them with the profession and that just getting a bare accounting degree is not all for it. Always aspire to have yourself qualified and, 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 and do professional work. All right, so who next? All right, thank you. Thank you very much. I, I wanted to speak in French if you allow me because I'm sure that I can explain myself in in English easily. Stand it to me, but let me. Where is your very degree? Johnny degree. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Stand it. Okay. Moi c'est Franck Boni. Voilà, je suis membre du Conseil de l'Ordre de Côte d'Ivoire. Le conseil. Le conseil, yes. yeah. euh, je représente ici euh, le président euh, Kone Trissa. Pour, pour le congrès que vous organisez, c'est vraiment un plaisir pour nous euh, d'être parmi vous. Voilà. Et le sujet que nos, nos consoeurs ont traité aujourd'hui, c'est un sujet très important. Parce que euh, nous rencontrons cette, euh, cette problématique au niveau de la Côte d'Ivoire également et au niveau de la France où même je suis également membre euh, donc, euh, des experts comptables français. On a également ces mêmes problématiques là. Pour moi, euh, le premier problème qu'il faut regarder, c'est pas seulement. Euh, le pourcentage de femmes qu'il y a parmi la profession, mais c'est déjà l'attractivité même de la profession. Notre profession, dans, sa, dans son essence même, est-ce qu'elle est attractive Pour moi, ce que je vois, ce n'est pas juste le pourcentage de femmes, mais l'attraction ou la motivation de prendre les femmes en Non, non, les femmes. Oh, oh, okay. Voilà, la profession, la profession n'est pas attractive. La profession n'est pas attractive. Oh, okay. <rire> La profession, la profession, comment on la rend attractive voilà, C'est ça. Pour moi, c'est le premier élément qu'il faut pouvoir régler. Parce que ça, que ce soit des hommes ou des femmes, okay, aujourd'hui, les jeunes n'aiment pas venir dans la profession parce qu'ils ne la trouvent pas attractive. Donc les jeunes ne viennent pas, que ce soit en France, en Côte d'Ivoire. En Côte d'Ivoire, après 25, 30 ans, on n'est que 230 espèces de 
Est-ce que vous voyez Les jeunes n'aiment pas la profession parce qu'ils ne trouvent pas la profession attractive. Et aujourd'hui, je pense que nous, nos institutions doivent pouvoir accentuer leur stratégie sur la communication. Sur la communication et le marketing pour rendre la profession très attractive. Donc, la profession, maintenant, ils ont un intérêt de la profession parce qu'ils ne trouvent pas donc pour nous aujourd'hui euh, c'est vrai que euh, les femmes c'est une question essentielle et parce que pas que elles n'ont pas la capacité elles ont suffisamment de capacités les femmes ok et elles les gens recherchent une certaine attente. Je pense qu'il faut qu'on travaille sur ça. Vous voyez, même si vous êtes où vous êtes, les femmes peuvent travailler de la maison. Elles peuvent travailler de la maison, elles n'ont pas besoin de travailler. Donc, la stratégie est une place où vous êtes, 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 Mr. Saki and your co-presenters uh, and of course the moderator, um, I find your topic very interesting because they say you will first say I am before they will say you are. Uh, we are hearing the issue from the houses club with the best uh, adequate people to state your own issue, and I think you did. And get it to the best. Um, they will not have been presented more than that. And I'm also happy that many issues are coming out, and you know, many efforts on the, on the, behind the scenes are also coming to the surface. Um, Mr. Orlando was, I mean, I did not know that I kind of initiated from his personal perspective is ongoing. Um, my suggestion has already been uh, addressed by the president and also. Uh, the honorable actor president. This is something I want to be. Is it possible that will be somehow, um, can I say, discriminatory or discreet about a decision? You go into, can I call it, you identify a specific number of students. This is only for the students. Um, we're not going to get all of them. I'm not being pessimistic, but that, let's be realistic. We're not going to get all of them 100% um, to go. To the highest height. But there will be some among them that will really have that zest, the enthusiasm, but the enthusiasm is going to be there as well. You did not just reach the level you are by, by, by words of mouth. You didn't reach it by rationalizing the, I mean, the challenges you have. You confronted those challenges and penetrated them and reached to your ultimate goal. We need to find that character is some of the female students that are being here back for those scholarships. And how do you call it? Make them our focus of motivation. And then start to work with them as our uh, case study to see how that how that goes. Sometimes if you you know get your target to sprint, uh, there's level who you control I mean, the desired output. So that's just my suggestion. And I want to say thank you to your team. It was a great presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, very good evening. Very very strong. Uh, uh, let me just share what we have done in Ghana. You know, with you. At the council level, we, we, we deliberately crafted our new law in a manner that at least there will always be at least two women in the council. So the law has created um, four different strata of members. So one will be 
three people coming from government. So that government is always represented. And that one is nominees from the government. The second strata is uh, the general members to be elected by members. So that one we will have a seven. But that seven we divide it into three. Uh, let me say four. One will be the president, so the members will elect their president, which is a change from what we used to do. And then the vice president, the members will elect their vice president. Then three members from the membership, male or female, anybody can, can contest on that slot. And then two members will come from only the women folk. So uh, you can put it there as a man. So the women have the opportunity to participate in each of the four sports at that general election. You can go for president, you can go for vice president. You can contest among the three, the slots for the three men, the three members, which is either male or female, or you can go to the two members, which is only for female. And uh, this is the first time we did that. Uh, we have a council of 11. Uh, and at the moment, we have five women, five men. If I was six women, five men. But our, our council now has to be approved by the Council of State. Uh, and the Council of State refused to approve one woman. So we have a council of 10 right now. Five men, five women to balance. So you may want to consider, because to have a a male dominated council without a female face. You lose the feminine side of things. Human life is incomplete. <laughs> Human life is incomplete when the two genders are not represented. It's not for nothing that God made us male and female. So you may want to consider an arrangement where you will always have the benefit of hearing the feminine side of things when you are making decisions. But the other side of it, uh, the, the Women Association, uh, very formidable. And so, few as you may be, got to be uh, to start from somewhere. Uh, in recent times, when we go through our graduation, the best students that we get who take the prizes often are female. And it is partly because of the work of uh, what we call our April Swan. Okay. Yeah, so uh, they have made it their duty to visit uh, particularly senior high schools, encourage the, the, the younger ones. And so they see, you made that submission. So the young people see the women standing in front of them. So they are the same. So they see that, oh, so if she was able to rise up, to this one, then we can do it. So, no matter how small your number may be, you've got to start from somewhere, and that will encourage the other people. You know. But at the council level, I think you should just consider how you will not necessarily do it exactly like this. But the, the other side of it is that we can wake up one day and have all 11 females on the council. The way they are, they are, they are and, 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 and the hour, if you are wanting to go on council, it's a formidable force. If you don't get your ass through our, you are, you are likely to be successful. So you, you are a formidable source of, uh, they are key makers. So try and, and start from somewhere and, and carry the young people. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, if you want to come in, please. Uh, a five one five four nine eight. Please, your vehicle is back in the car. Please, somebody wants to get out. A five one five four nine eight. It's a Nissan Rogue. Black Nissan Rogue. All right, thank you. Get in it. Thank you very much. I like to thank the panel beginning with Madam uh, Saki. You have done well with the topic that you discussed. I, looking at it at a bigger picture, I think this is very good for 
the inner city. Because where you can get in a room and discuss issue without fear, I think this is the proof, the beginning of the real group of LRCP. What I didn't hear you say, even though you talk about the discrimination and all of that between the male and the female, there is one particular prevalent point. The discrimination in the salary structure our president sitting down here, if his wife was an, an accountant, you go to employ him and you employ her, she might even be doing a better job than him, but they will pay him higher salary. <laughs> this is in Liberia, this is in America, it's in the law profession, it's in the healthcare, medical, everything. My question is, why is that? The women sometimes put out very good results and we don't reward them. This is a challenge to us, even for our profession in Liberia here. Let us give equal salary to these people. And my other point is, it's not so much to you. But what we have today, Mr. Shaw, said that, they, that in, the, in the early days of the fight, they petitioned the government and he called the likes of Sam Mumo to lift the Badoo. Had the government passing law that anybody preparing tax returns should, should have an audited financial statement. That is very profound. This is one way we're going to grow the Liberia Institute. We are getting support from the government. It's identified as risk, and I agree with that. But if we increase the membership base, the same government can help us pass certain legislation right now that will change everything at LRCP. For example, the accounting firms, if they are giving enough jobs, enough work to do, we can ask them and they will be able to pay our fees, our, <laughs> our due fees to us. This is how we will be able to sustain ourselves. So to me, this accounting week is very historic. We should not leave it at one counter setting. It should be an annual continuous thing to go on. I thank you very much and this is how I see, even at the ASWA level, it's not everybody that takes ASWA as a, a path to become a CA. So, what does that say? Let's put just how we have the RC, I mean, professional membership, a subsection within that, those that remain only at ASWA, let them have their own organization and pay dues to us at that level. So these are things that I think it will reflect on. It can change the LRC period. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you also, Mr. President, that you are ready to work on the forward. We think the owners are not going to be able to help us in our own Thank you. Thank you. Zibo and thank you for your presentation. Very, very good. Thank you. We will ask how we set up this person. Please get them ready. Thank <laughs> you.
So thank you for following us here on Okay, so we'll be back. Don't tell you.